Okay, so this is part two. If I take too long, I'm gonna kind of inhale too many fumes. Um, and you know, I drive around here and there, you know, roll down the window, they, they, they come after me in large groups. And I have over 22 witnesses, and any scientist will tell you that that's a sure sign that it's not in your head when 22 witnesses have witnessed the same thing. You know, I've never even heard of a schizophrenic in all of my life, in all my research into mental health, that had 22 witnesses to the things that people want to pretend that he's not seeing. Okay, so I'm not schizophrenic. <laughs> we can look at that, you know, praise the Lord and so on and so forth. Okay, it's, um, it's not in my head. All right. So, you know, as we were talking about the parable of the sower, okay, again, there was, you know, the rock, right? So there was the path, there was the rock, there was the sun, okay? There's the vine, okay? There's the good soil. There's a lot of nature. There's a lot of um, comparisons throughout the Bible, a lot of points of references that they use to kind of decode these things. If you write down everything the sun is referring to in the Bible, you're going to start seeing a pattern. If you write down everything the water is referring to, Jesus walked on water, okay? The storm clouds, things pertaining to water, the sea, okay, the ocean, okay, the waves crashing on the beach in Isaiah, righteousness, peace, justice, okay, the king's heart, in the, in the Lord's hand, the king's heart is a stream of water. If you write down everything that the wind is referring to, Psalm 84, 1842, I beat them as fine as windblown dust, I trampled them like mud in the streets. Jeremiah 4, 13, look, he advances like the clouds. His chariots come like a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe to us, we are ruined. Jeremiah 13, uh, 24, uh, I will scatter you like chaff driven by the desert wind. You'll start seeing the patterns again and again and again. Jeremiah 22, 22, the wind will drive all your shepherds away. So we see it's used consistently in the same way. Isaiah 30 is one of the most key scriptures there. Um, it's Isaiah, you know, I don't have it labeled here in my notes, but it says, See, the name of the Lord comes from afar with burning anger and dense clouds of smoke. His lips are full of wrath and his tongue is a consuming fire. His breath is like a rushing torrent rising up to the neck. He shakes the nations in the sea of destruction. He places in the jaws of the people a bit that leads them astray. And you will sing as, uh, as on the night you celebrate a holy festival. Your hearts will rejoice as when people playing pipes go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the rock, to the rock of Israel, right? To the rock of Israel. So if you're not in the divine order and you're seeking the sun and the rock of Israel without that armor of God, put on the armor of God, how? From being in the formation, right? Formula, form, and formation of God by rallying and obeying God through me. Okay? You don't have to do martial arts, but you have to rally and obey God through me. And in in, spiritually speaking, you're doing the essence of true divine martial arts, monotheistic, okay? but you don't have to actually throw a single punch or anything like that. It will help you, you know, get in shape and, and it help you convey the spirit if that's what you choose, but you don't have to do that. But it is a martial art order. There's a reason why angels are depicted with swords and spears. David and Goliath, Joshua, Jericho, Samson, Benaiah, Samuel. Josh, uh, Jonathan, his son, okay, striking down the Philistines in the spirit of God. And, and it goes on and on and on, you know. So it's pretty straightforward, right? We can talk about the Bibles, uh, excuse me, the battles in, in Samuel. But I'm pretty sure you get why I'm right by now. Judges 3, God left the enemies of Israel, the other tribes around them, to teach them warfare. So we look at the parable of the sower, okay? There's no easy explanation for what the rock is, the sun is, right? The sun, the sun in righteousness. The sun is a symbol of the bridegroom. The sun is the sun is what a martial artist would say it is, trying to explain to you the significance of striking with focus, moral intensity. That's like the easiest explanation for what the sun is. The rock, you know, building something, stoning someone to death with focus, moral intensity, okay? Thorns, right? Wearing the crown of thorns as you're using focus, moral intensity to move and with universal pinpoint and moral precision in the spirit of God to give them the message of righteousness and justice from God, right? Righteousness and justice, it says in Psalms, are the foundation of God's throne and the Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name, Exodus 15, 3, okay? So all this stuff is saying be in the divine order of God and sow your seed. Be married, right? You know, like people marry in churches, right? They're doing it in the Luciferian spirit. They're supposed to do it in the true Royal African Falcon, martial arts spirit of God. Hebrew is an Afro-Asiatic language. What happens if you mix Afro-Asiatic together in, in spiritually speaking, okay? You would get Martin Luther King sort of mixed with, you know, 
uh, um, uh, a Jet Li, but a more serious Jet Li who's actually serious about Kung Fu. You get this kind of stuff mixed together until you get people striking in a way that's appropriate for their body, right? So they're, you know, if you're a big guy, you're probably not going to do Kung Fu, right? You're a big, slow guy. Okay, if you're a tall, kind of Egyptian pharaoh-shaped guy, you're not going to do it either, right? You're going to strike in a way that's appropriate to you. You're going to take that Holy Spirit and strike in a way that your muscle lines up effectively, that you can effectively strike, right? You know, for example, if you're on a football team, you know, if you're a big guy, you're probably a lineman or something, okay? If you're, you know, good at throwing the football, you're probably a, a quarterback, if you're good at running and, 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 and you're good at catching the ball and so on and so forth, you're probably a wide receiver. And so it is with martial arts. But it's that essence that is righteousness and justice and focus moral intensity that is being conveyed, right, from God through the heart of the king is being conveyed um, to uh, the divine order, to those who are in submission to God, right? Um, where we see where, where Muslims are talking about, they say Islam means uh, to submit Right. I believe I, I was told one time that, you know, it means those who are in submit or a Muslim means those who are in submission to God. Right. Those who have peace with God. Right? That's why they can go to war because it's peace with God and not necessarily with man. OK, so that what where they got that from is from the Abrahamic faith, is from martial arts, is from African spirituality and religion. It is submitting to God right in a warrior spirit and you have peace sometimes you have love you have these other life principles too right having heart okay heart can have you know can mean courage it can mean loving your family loving your wife passionate love conveyed from God but if it doesn't start with God it's not love it's not reality morality more reality okay let's move on to the next section a lamp on a stand he said to them do you bring in a lamp in order excuse me do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed and said, don't you put on a stand? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed. And whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. Now, some people say, hey, you know, you say you're the top martial artist and it's a Royal African Falcon martial order. You sound like a racist or you sound like you're arrogant. But, the, you know, this is after the parable of the sower. You're supposed to sow elevating me the stand they're supposed to the stand is like a formation it's a form of something right it's people forming together to take a stand for the light of justice isaiah 51 okay the light of justice the light of righteousness the light of vindication from what living in the walking in the way of righteousness along the path of justice the path of the righteous is like the morning sun shining ever brighter to the full light of day okay so it's the light of god the light of justice it's the light of true justice divine justice the light of divine martial arts Okay, because if you're honest about what's ideal, instead of being an idolater, you're going to put the morally precise martial art hero above other people. You're going to say he's the leader. Okay, if you were just, if you were Ronald McDonald, okay, or you were Debo from Friday, would you act like you should be the leader instead of Martin Luther King during that movement? How much more when the Messiah, the top martial arts ever is here, he should be in charge. That's what it means by putting a lamp on a stand. I am the light, the light of the world. That is the way, the truth, and the life. And I am the light of the world, the light of justice, the light of God's vindication. You see what I'm saying? So he says, if anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. Consider carefully what you hear. He continued, with the measure you use, it will be measured to you and even more. That part's key. And even more. Because this, 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 elaborate, this, this elaborates on other parts of the Bible where it says, as you judge, you shall be judged. It says, first remove the log from your own eye then you can see clearly to remove the log from your brother's eye, okay? So as you judge, you'll be judged, and even more, you'll be judged correctly, and part, and part of the consideration will be how you judge things. If you say, well, I don't believe him, why didn't you believe me? Is it because I'm black, because I'm half black and not black enough? Is it because I'm tall? Is it because I live in California? Why didn't you believe me? You see what I'm saying? So as you judge to say, hey, I don't think it's logical to list, hear this guy out and rally to him, okay, you're judged for that. You see what I'm saying? That's part of it. And there, and every other angle, right? Angels work angles. If you're trying to be an angel, you're trying to be righteous, you're trying to be right with God, you're working angles to see what is the best way to serve God with all your heart because that's the greatest commandment, to love God with all your being. Jacob, he loved. Esau, he hated. God hated them by their actions. So by your actions, you're supposed to love God. Actions speak louder. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. So those people who you know, are outside the divine order, okay, and they, they're clinging on to their wealth or their family, those things are going to be taken from them, and they're going to be thrown into the fire, okay, they're going to be given to the righteous one, and God is saying to me, and to my soul, 
okay, and says to my soul, what do you think should be done with these? These things are yours. And I say, I'm in alignment with you. And I, yes, I agree they deserve to be punished. So what you have is taken and thrown into the lake of fire. You see what I'm saying? Because you did not have that, that the greatest commandment intact. You didn't have, you didn't keep the divine law, which is the essence of the law, which is do unto others as you would have them do unto you, which is loving God with all your heart. You didn't have that intact. Okay? And you cheated me out of my right to lead. And as such, you were not in the divine order. Therefore, you failed the parable of the sower. You failed the parable of the tenants. You failed the parable of the ten minas. And so on and so forth. The parable of the wise and foolish builders. You failed all the parables by not keeping the greatest commandment, which would be to obey God through me. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Isaiah 28, 17. Make righteousness and justice the measuring line and plume line. Why didn't you judge for yourselves what is right? The parable of the growing seed. He also okay. The parable of the growing seed. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground, night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, so he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts a sickle to it because the harvest has come. So God scattered seed. My father scattered seed. I'm growing to be a righteous person. As a, as a son of two doctors, neither of them truly understand why I'm righteous. They know that things tend to work out a certain way when you do things a certain way. When you work out, even, doc, uh, even scientists can't truly claim to understand why your body is changing. And so it is with the more profound and hidden and important things in life. People don't understand why. If you're in the divine order, okay, and you're feeling the warrior spirit of God, that determination to do God's work in truth, no theater arts, no trying to impress anybody, no trying to control anybody, no ulterior motives, they in truth, okay? Now, I don't consider seeking true love an ulterior motive. Okay, it's just part of it. Say, I'm a man, I'm doing God's work, and I want to have, you know, I want to, to vie with truth and who I truly am. And the fact that I'm a righteous man for a beautiful woman, that's fair play. And that's not ulterior motive. Trying to cheat people and lie about things to try to snake them and try to use that you're the majority group or you're rich or whatever cards you're trying to play, that's not fair play. Okay? So the growing seed, right? The harvest is going to come. You're going to collect your victory. You don't understand how it's growing, okay? The path of the righteous is like the morning sun shining ever brighter to the full light of day. Why is that? I don't know. God, Only God knows, okay? But I do know that it has to do with me loving God and cultivating that love. It has to do with my warrior determination to serve God. That surgical striking, monotheistic, transcendent hero, morally precise martial arts spirit that God put there, which is God's spirit. It transcends all their spirits. So how do you know it's God's spirit and not, you know, being a boxer? Because it transcends that. It's even called boxing and fencing, right? This is thinking outside the box. It's transcending the box. Not to mention it causes cognitive damage unfairly and unnecessarily. So that's also how we know it's not MMA fighting. We know it's not Eastern martial arts because they're basically not monotheistic martial arts anyway, okay? The evidence is quite strong that it's monotheistic Royal African Falcon martial arts. We see something in Martin Luther King and Malcolm X as they sought to do God's work to a certain degree. Certainly, they're probably in, 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 in social clubs behind the scenes other than the ones we knew that they were in, okay? The groups that we knew that they were in, okay? But we can see a spectrum of activities and the proof is in the pudding and them dying, you know, saying certain things with a certain way about them. Okay, that goes beyond theater arts. So they may have been acting to some degree, but we also see something else there. That is important to understand that distinction. Okay, the parable of the mustard seed. Again, he said, what should we say the kingdom of God is like? What parable should we use to describe it? It becomes the largest of all, excuse, excuse me, excuse me. It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his, his own disciples, he explained everything. 
So what is the mustard seed? Are we talking about physical height? No. Okay, we're talking about like right now in society, I'm not famous, but eventually I'll surpass all the spirits, all the movements, all the ideas, all the, the efforts in society. 